depths of the ocean. Those rings make it look like Uranus has been tilted off its axis, toppled over by a stray planet. It's eerie out here. Already beginning to feel small, lonely. Maybe this is how we'll feel at the edge of the universe. But we've barely left the shore. If the solar system was one mile wide, so far we've traveled about three inches. Out of the deep, another strange beast, the god of the sea, Neptune. This world is covered in methane gas, and a storm as big as Earth, whipped up by savage 1,000 mile an hour winds. Back home, it's the sun that drives the wind. But Neptune's far away. Something else must be creating these ferocious winds. But what? We know very little about our own solar system. After all those balls of gas, a solid moon. Triton. Solid, but not stable. Look at those geysers, cosmic smokestacks, pumping out strange soot. And this moon is revolving around Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's spin. A cosmic battle of wills that this angry moon is destined to lose. Neptune's massive gravity is pulling on Triton, slowing it down, reeling it in. One day, it will be ripped apart by Neptune. And that's it. No more moons, no more planets in our solar system. It's getting colder. We're getting further from the sun, slipping from the grip of its gravitational tentacles. But this isn't a void. It's teeming with frozen rocks like Pluto. Until recently, we thought Pluto was alone. Beyond it, nothing. We were wrong. More frozen worlds. Discoveries so new, nobody can agree what to call them. Plutinos, ice dwarfs, Cubiwanos. Our solar system is far more chaotic and strange than we had imagined. Now we're eight billion miles from home. The most distant thing ever seen that orbits the sun. Another small icy world, Sedna, discovered in 2003. Its orbit takes 10,000 years to complete. Hang on, there's something else out here. 10 billion miles from home, the space probe Voyager 1. This bundle of aluminum and antennae give us close-up views of the giant planets and discovered many of their strange moons. It's traveling 20 times faster than a bullet, sending messages home. That gold plaque, 
It's a kind of intergalactic message in a bottle. A greeting recorded in different languages. And a map showing how to find our home solar system. The great physicist Stephen Hawking thinks it was a mistake to roll out the welcome mat. After all, if you're in the jungle, is it wise to call out? These comets look like the ones we saw earlier. There's a theory that the raw materials for life began out here on a rock like this until something dislodged it, sending it hurtling towards the Earth. And seeing all this ice, maybe comets carried water to Earth too. The water in the oceans, in your body. All from this distant celestial ice machine. We're five million million, that's five trillion miles from home. But this is still only a baby step. Ahead, trillions of miles, billions of stars. Time to stop looking back and start looking ahead. To step out into the big wide universe. interstellar space. Billions of stars like our own sun, many with planets, many of those with moons. It's hard to know which way to go. There are infinite possibilities. We're going to need a serious burst of acceleration. ride in the space shuttle. And we've only just reached the first solar system beyond our own. Alpha Centauri. Not one, but three stars. Spinning around each other, locked in a celestial standoff. Each star's gravity attracting the other. Their blazing orbital speed keeping them apart. Get between them and we'd be vaporized. Trillions of miles from home. So far that miles are becoming meaningless. Out here we measure in light years. Light travels six trillion miles a year 